Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and once again we're going to check out X-Wing. Specifically, we're going to look at the M3-A Interceptor. It's a ship that is part of Wave 6, or the Scum and Villainy Faction. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen my unboxing video, I've covered it there too, so go check it out after you're done here. The M3-A Interceptor is a very small but fast, agile craft, uh, but it has uh, like three hit points overall. Uh, yeah, two hull and one shield, so it can't take a lot of hits, but it makes up for it with a very low point cost. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at what came with this particular expansion. Okay, so here's a quick look at the components minus all of the little tokens. Um, once again, I don't cover all of the tokens just because they tend to repeat themselves. Um, after doing like 15 or 20 expansion videos, they tend to repeat themselves and I just don't feel like doing it. So just keep in the back of your mind that the tokens that come with an expansion like this usually reflect the ship class in question. There's a focus and an evade on the uh, pilot cards, for example, so there are focus tokens and evade tokens inside the expansion. But here's a quick look at the model. Again, for those of you that haven't seen my unboxing video. Alright, so there's that. Like I said, a very small craft. Here's a quick look at the bases, at least the covers for the bases, and the maneuver dial. You'll notice that the firing arcs are yellow instead of the green or red as is standard with the Imperial and Rebels respectively. And as far as what they can do on the maneuver dial, you've got uh, one hard turns, those are white maneuvers, one slight turns, no straight at one from the looks of it, so if I can refocus, there we go. But those are green maneuvers there. And then on to the twos, you've got a hard two, slight two, that is also a green maneuver. Straight at two, that's a green maneuver. Okay, next up are the three, slight turn at three, straight at three, and slight right at three. No hard turns at three, although going straight at three is a green maneuver. You can also perform a K turn on three, but that is a red maneuver. Then you can go straight at four, and there's also a five K turn. Okay, so as far as the pilot cards are concerned, we'll start with this Sarisu pilot. Again, I'm going to be butchering these names left and right. For those of you that have seen my prior videos, I never get these names right, but uh, get over it. You've got a pilot skill of 8, and you've got some stats over here, 2, 3, 2, and 1. Like I said, very weak and only has a total of 3 hit points, but has 3 agility, so it helps to make up for it there. Uh, when another friendly ship at range 1 is defending, it may re-roll one defense die. So it acts sort of like how Runner does for the Empire, only in a more defensive nature. You've got focus, target lock, barrel roll, and evade, and this particular pilot costs 20. And it looks like you've got an elite uh, symbol down here on the very bottom of the upgrade bar. The next pilot that we're going to look at is Leighton Ashera. Pilot skill 6, same stats. After you defend against an attack, if the attack did not hit, you may assign one evade token to your ship. Also, same um, actions. Focus, target lock, barrel roll, evade. Cost of 18, nothing in the upgrade bar. Then you've got this Tansari Point Veteran, uh, which is just uh, regular Joe Schmo, no special ability here. Same actions, although this does have... Um, surprisingly an elite symbol whereas this other pilot with a pilot skill of six does not that's a weird it's a weird thing you'd think that someone with a higher pilot skill would also have an elite symbol down here but whatever um, that has a point cost of 17 it might be explained in the lore I don't know all right and finally um, again just another Joe Schmo uh, cartel spacer uh, pilot skill of two no upgrade down here cost of 14 all right, so as far as the upgrade cards are concerned, we'll start with the Fletchette Cannon. Um, this is an attack. You can attack one ship with this. Three attack die, range one to three. If this attack hits, the defender suffers one damage. And if the defender is not stressed, it also receives one stress token. Then cancel all dice results. To me, that seems like a combination of an ion attack um, and the Fletchette Torpedo, which is pretty interesting. That is a point cost of two. That is a heavy weapon. For those of you curious, Mangler Cannon, another heavy weapon, uh, three attack dice, range one to three, which is pretty cool because a lot of the cannons on the Empire and Emerald side uh, sometimes are only like two to three. 
Like, I think the heavy laser cannon is 2 to 3 and can attack at range 1. But this one can attack at range 1, and uh, this one can attack at range 1. This is an attack. When attacking, you may change one of your hit results to a crit result. It has an upgrade cost of 4. Stealth device, we've seen those before, so I'm not going to bother reading those off. Heavy Sick Interceptor, I don't know how to pronounce that again, terrible with names on this. Um, the M3-A Interceptor only, which is a title. Uh, your upgrade bar gains the Heavy Laser Cannon, Proton Torpedo, or the Missile Upgrade Icon that has a point cost of 2. And the Ion Cannon, we have seen this one already, so I'm not going to bother reading that off. But that is present. And that concludes all of the upgrade cards. Okay, and there you have it, a very brief look at the M3-A Interceptor. Uh, this is probably the lightest and the cheapest of the expansion packs. Um, I think it's only like, I don't know, 10 or 12 bucks, depending on where you buy it. Um, the downside to this, and I'm going to say downside, but the caveat to that is that um, this has a, a lot of application to be um, involved in some type of swarm, like a Z95 swarm or a TIE fighter swarm. So essentially you could buy a whole bunch of these little ships because it has a low point cost and then add them to your fleet. So while only one of these expansions might only cost 10 or 12 bucks, um, if you buy you know three or five of them to create a swarm, that could end up hitting your wallet that way. So um, again, it's worth noting I didn't cover everything here, not all the tokens and so on and so forth, but hopefully this gives you a brief taste as to what you're in for should you decide to pick up this expansion. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribed to my YouTube channel. That way you can keep up to date with any new content I'm going to publish. And also feel free to check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.